as a guide to the humanity, as a criteria to judge right from wrong. Quran says in Surah Al Zumur, chapter 39, verse 41, that we have revealed to thee, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the book to instruct mankind. It doesn't say to instruct the Arabs or the Muslims, but to instruct the whole of humankind. So, Quran is a revelation which is meant till eternity and for the whole of humankind. Even if Veda was the word of God, even if Bhagavad Gita was the word of God, today it has not maintained its original form. Quran says in Surah Hijar, chapter 15, verse number 9, Allah will guard it from corruption. It's an uncorrupted book. So, even if Veda was the word of God, it has been changed. Even if it hasn't been changed, if some people say, it was only meant for those people and for that time. Today, all the people in the world, whether living in India or America, or Europe, they should follow the last and final revelation, the glorious Quran. Question from the Gen side. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Zakir Naik, my question is you give a shocking account of the pathetic conditions of Muslims, especially of Muslims of India, I think that uh, they are lagging far behind in media generally, especially in mass media. So on and so forth, they lag far behind in journalism, etc., etc. These are all the symptoms of a disease. That means one cannot be an enemy of himself. A community cannot be the enemy of itself. When the community is lagging behind in each and every aspect, to the extent that a small offshoot of the same community, that Kadianism, they say, you say they are doing well. So will you be able to give the exact reason why Muslims are lagging behind in all these fields? Well, as a question that why are Muslims lagging behind when we know that it's a particular condition, that in media we're lacking behind, in journalism, in science and technology, why we're lacking behind? Do you know, brother, at a time we were on the top, from the 8th to the 12th centuries, it was called as the Dark Ages. As the Dark Ages. Dark for whom? Dark for the Europeans. The media today projects from the 8th to 12th century Dark Ages. Who's projecting? The media. The media. It was dark for the Europeans. They were backward. The world was not backward. The world with the limited knowledge that the Arab Muslims had, the amount of advances they made is tremendous. You know, there were Muslim scientists who were far advanced from the 8th to 12th century. If you know the scientific history, that Muslim were fired march in several fields. In several. The first person who discovered the blood circulation was Ibn Nafis, 600 years after the revolution of the Quran. But today we know of William Harvey. William Harvey described blood circulation 400 years after Ibn Nafis. But no one knows about Ibn Nafis. Everyone knows about William Harvey. Media is in their hand. Then further, the first person who drew the world map was the Arab, Ali Drusi, in 1154. Mathematics, Muslim were far advanced. The zero was learned from the Indians. The Arabs introduced zero and the decimal point to the world. In trigonometry, Muslim were far advanced. If you know Al Buruni, he was expert in trigonometry and maths. We learn about the Pythagoras theorem in school that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Pythagoras theorem. Who, who discovered it? A Muslim, Al Abtusi, a Muslim. He discovered it. We know about Pythagoras theorem, we don't know about al -Aptusi. We are to blame. The media is in their hands. If you know al Kindi, he was expert in physics, in mathematics. He first said that all laws aren't absolute, they are relative. All physical laws aren't absolute. Newton, Galileo, all of them said all physical laws are absolute. Al Kindi said no, they are relative. It was Albert Einstein who later on did more research and propounded the theory of relativity. We know about Albert Einstein, no one knows about al Kindi. Shakir, Muhammad and Ahmad, these three brothers, they gave the surface area of the earth by measuring angle at the Red Sea. When people thought the world was flat. The person who first distilled alcohol, we learn in school, Gabar, Gabar. What is Gabar? He's Jabir, Jabir ibn Hayyan. They even Latinized the name so that we don't come to know he's a Muslim. You know Gabar sounds like a Westerner, Gabar. Jabir. If you say Jabir, you know it's a Muslim. And if you say Gabar, a Westerner. Jabir ibn Hayyan was expert in the field of chemistry. He distilled alcohol and the word alcohol comes from the word Al-Gul, meaning an evil spirit. We learn in a school, Gebar, Gebar, Jabir. 2000 works he wrote only on chemistry. Ali ibn Abbas, expert in the field of uh, medicine. If you know about uh, Muhammad Zakaria Razi, 
he was expert. He spoke about measles and smallpox. The finding of his was tremendous. We know Avicenna, Avicenna. Who is Avicenna? Ali ibn Sina, Avicenna. Avicenna sounds like a westerner. Ali ibn Sina. He is known as the Aristotle of the East. So the media is in their hand. The Muslims were tremendous. They were powerful. We were on the top. We were the torch bearers. Why? Because we were close to the Quran and the Sunnah. Today, Muslims are going to the dogs, I'm saying. Dogs. You know why? We are backward. Why? Because we are going away from our religion. The reason the Westerners are advancing is because they too are going away from the religion. The next question is, uh, Mr. Atul Menon is keen on knowing why do Muslims have non-veg food? Killing an animal is a ruthless, merciless act. Why do Muslims have non-veg food? The question posed was that why do Muslims have non-veg food? Killing animal is ruthless, why don't take life, etc. You should be vegetarian. And these many of our non-Muslim friends in India, especially the Hindus and Jain, they tell us. If you analyze the set of teeth of the herbivorous animals, like the cow, the goat, the sheep, they have got flat teeth. They only eat vegetables. If you analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animal, lion, tiger, leopard, they have got pointed set of teeth. Point set of teeth. But if you analyze the set of teeth of the human beings, we have flat teeth as well as pointed teeth. Herbivorous teeth as well as carnivorous teeth. We have an omnivorous set of teeth. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did He give us this pointed teeth? Why? He wanted us to have both. Where is that non-veg? Again, the digestive system of the cow can only digest vegetables. It can't digest non-veg. The digestive system of the carnivorous animal, lion, tiger, leopard, can only digest non-veg, can't digest vegetable. The digestive system of the human being can digest both non-veg and veg. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did He give us a digestive system which can digest both veg and non-veg? And further, if you analyze that most of the religious scripture, whether it's Bible or Veda or Ramayana, they give permission to have non-veg. If you read the Hindu scriptures, the sages and sons, they had non-veg. They even ate beef. If you read Ayodhya Khandam, chapter number 20, chapter 26, chapter number 94, it says when Ram was sent for Banwas, he told his mother that I will have to sacrifice my tasty meat dishes. If he had to sacrifice tasty meat dishes, that means he had meat. When Ram can have meat, why can't you have meat? People may not know the details of Ramayan, but they surely know the outline story of Ramayan, that when Ram was sent for Banwas, even his wife Sita accompanied him. And once Sita asked Ram to kill the buck. You may be knowing the story, you know, it comes on the television and comic strips, that Sita asked Ram to kill the buck. You ask a Hindu friend, why did Sita ask Ram to kill the buck, to kill the deer? So some people may argue, oh, maybe Sita wanted a pet. So you ask, that if Sita wanted a pet, what will Sita do with a dead pet? What will Sita do with a dead pet? She asked Ram to kill the bug because she wanted to eat the meat. There's no other answer. So when she can have non-veg, why can't you have non-veg? Now there are some of the people who argue are saying that if you analyze, the Hindu scriptures give permission. But the reason why they even became vegetarian is because they were being influenced by other philosophies like Jainism, etc., which believed in Ahimsa. Now if you argue with the Jain and you ask with these Hindus now who have given up non-veg, some of them, when you ask them why should we not have non-veg, so they will tell you, non-veg is killing living creatures. If you kill living creatures, bad. Therefore you should have only plants. Today science has advanced and we have come to know that even plants are living creatures. Previously people thought plants have no life. But today we have come to know even plants are living creatures, they have life. So the argument has changed. Yes, brother Zakir, we know that plants have life. But you know, plants can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant is less a sin as compared to killing an animal. Today, science has further advanced and we have come to know, even the plants can feel pain. They can even cry. They even feel happy. Do you know that? Research is shown to us today that the plants even feel happy. They can even cry. They feel pain. But the thing is, you cannot hear their cry. Because the human frequency is from 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below and above this you can't hear. You know silent dog whistle? The dog can hear till 40,000 cycles per second.